Our Father in heaven, we are grateful unto you. We sincerely want to say thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, because just like yesterday, we were taking a break so that you can refill us. And Lord, you have brought us again to this point. We are therefore starting the teachings of Christ series in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We ask, O oh God, that we will experience greater grace, greater mercy, greater understanding, and greater transformation of our lives. Father, please be merciful to us today as we look at Jesus. Open our eyes to see him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So our text for today is Hebrews chapter 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 12. That's what we'll be looking at today. Hebrews chapter 12. Um, we will read maybe verse 1 and 2 and see how the Holy Spirit will open up that to us. And then we will proceed to look at um, whatever the Lord will say to us today. We are looking at looking unto Jesus. So Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So uh, how do we look at Jesus? The Bible says we must look unto Jesus. But before that, there are a few issues in that verse 1 that we read. If you remember that in Hebrews chapter, 7, chapter 11, rather, we read what we usually refer to as heroes of faith. Various brethren who had faced various issues. The Bible described them as cloud of witnesses. Cloud of witnesses. Now, what this means is this. You are not the first person that is going to run this race with God. You are not going to be the first Christian. You are not going to be the first person that will know God. Some people have known God and they've gone ahead. And they are referred to now as cloud of witnesses. If what you are going through is that you have been waiting on God for something to happen. You are waiting on God for something in your life, something in the life of another person. You've trusted God, you've prayed. Ten years has gone by, nothing has happened. Twenty years, nothing has happened. There is a cloud of witness in Abraham who waited until he was hundred to have a single child. That was a man that walked with God. That was a man that God said, leave your father's house to a place that I will show you. And he obeyed. A man that could let go of everything he had lived for. And then for that man to have a single child. <laughs> it took him 25 years after obeying the call of God to have a single child. If you are the type that the issue is sexual temptation. We have a cloud of witness in Joseph. You know there is a difference between uh, being tempted and living in sin. When many people refer to Joseph, what they are going through today is not exactly what happened to Joseph. Today, people are living in sin. They are deliberately going to look for sin. Joseph did not look for sin. Joseph faced temptation. Only a righteous man can be tempted. A man that is living in sin is not being tempted. That man is living his normal life. Today, many people are living in sin, but they call it temptation. There's a difference between being tempted and living in sin. 
It is only a righteous person that can be tempted. Jesus was tempted because he was a righteous person. Joseph was tempted because he was a righteous person. So there is a cloud of witness. If you, if what you are saying is that the reason why you are lost in is because women are, are wearing trousers, you must remember that Joseph was in a house with a naked woman and he still did not fall. We have a cloud of witness in Elijah who lived with a widow for three and a half years and did not sleep with her. But your own problem is that you are going everywhere advocating for women not to wear trousers because that is your own problem. We have a cloud of witness who will witness against you. Who will tell you that, see, we were with naked women and we did not fall. And then you, you are seeing women that are wearing clothes, you are having issues. There is a cloud of witness for anything you are going through. You are not going to be the first person that's going to have an experience with God. Don't allow Satan to tell you that your experience is unique. If you are the first, if, if what you are going through is sickness, going through pain, going through issues that has to do with your health and that has to do with your body, there are a cloud of witnesses to that also. Job was an example. He was a righteous man. He didn't commit any sin. It was not generational cause. It was not an ancestral spirit. It was not because he wasn't doing exercise regularly. It's not because he wasn't eating good fruit. It's not because he was eating wrong food or because he took vaccine. That was not the problem. He had health, serious health issues. He endured the pain. Healing did not come immediately. You would think God would just heal Job the following day. It didn't happen the following day. It didn't happen the following week. It didn't happen the following month. This brother endured great pain and sickness. And he did not deny God. He is a cloud of witness. So if you say that, well, because I'm having health challenge, I am not going to trust God again. I am not going to believe in God again. Then there is a cloud of witness against you. There is also Anna, a woman that lost her husband probably at the age of 17 or 18 and remained like that until she was 80 something years old, fasting and prayer and praying rather. And then you are saying, so I'm just 33 years old and this man has left me. Will I remain like this? Will I remain like this? There was a woman like Anna. There is nothing you are going through in this Christian race that we do not have witnesses. Look at what the Bible says. He says since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it's not a witness of one person. It's not a witness of two persons. We are talking of a great crowd a great cloud of witnesses. You know how the cloud is. When you look outside and look at the cloud, can you count the cloud? And they are very high. They are looking at you. There is none of us that has excuse. There is none of us that we say, what I am going through is unique to me. Nobody understands it. Nobody knows it. My challenge is very difficult. It is a lie. Somebody has gone through it. If you are only that they lied against you, they are victimizing you. That was exactly what they did to Jesus. That was exactly what they did to Stephen. That's exactly what they did to Joseph. They lied against Joseph. The things he never did, they said he did it. Yet he didn't become bitter at heart. They persecuted Stephen. They were going to stone him to death. Yet he said, Father, forgive them. Let not this charge against them. Brethren, what is it that you are going through? That there is no cloud of witness to that thing. That is nothing that you are going through. There is a cloud of witness. There is somebody who had gone ahead of you. There is somebody who had experienced it. So we have no excuse. That's what the Bible is saying. It says, we are for. Seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. What should be our response? Knowing that we have this cloud of witnesses. You are a preacher. You are preaching the truth. But you can't even change your clothes. You have John the Baptist. 
he was wearing only the, <laughs> the skin of an animal and eating locusts. That was a man that his ministry was prophesied by Isaiah. That was a man that was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. Yet when he, was, when he began his ministry, there was no wealth about him. Yet he remained faithful. He didn't begin to look for how to do it. Today, many young people, once you feel God has called you into ministry, you begin to look for how to do it. There is no how to do it other than to follow Jesus. What you are looking for is how to make money. It's not how to do anything. You are just looking for how to make money because you think ministry is about making money. We have a cloud of witness in John the Baptist. He didn't do any miracle. God didn't perform any miracle through his ministry. Did you know that? John didn't heal the, the sick. He didn't open the eyes of the blind. Yeah, the Bible said people came to him. We have a cloud of witness, no matter what you are going through. But yet, the scripture now says to us, it says, on account of this, this is what you should now do. It says, let us lay aside every weight and every sin we so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Every Christian is in a race. You must become conscious that you are not on holiday. You must become conscious that you are not a spectator. People who are spectators are not in a race. They are there to watch other people run. They are there to clap for other people. You are not a spectator. A Christian is not a spectator. You are an active participant. You are in the race. This life is a race. A race has a beginning. A race has an end. You are not going to be in this race forever. A race has a reward. There is something you must run to achieve. This life is not an aimless life. This life is not a purposeless life. This life is a purposeful life. The Christian race is a purposeful life. It's not simply, oh, I am now born again. So let me add born again to my title. And then let me continue to do what I'm doing. Brethren, you are in a race. You are out in a race. That must register in your spirit that you are in a race. And you are not going to run forever. And many people are finishing their race. As I'm speaking, some people are dropping out of the race. You are in a race. There is a race that is set before you. There is a race that is set before you. There is a race that is set before me. If you remember in 2 Timothy, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. The scripture says, run so that you can obtain. Telling us how to run our race. Don't run this Christian race carelessly. We are in a race. Many people live their life as if they are not in a race. There is nothing you... See, you cannot hit a target that you do not aim at. You can't hit a target that you do not aim at. If you do not rise up from the bed every morning with a consciousness that I am in a race. A race also means you can't remain where you are. You can't remain. You can't, you can't run a race and be stationary. <laughs> you can't run a race and be redundant. For you to run a race, there has to be movement. There has to be growth. But then there are issues about that race before we can even look at Jesus. There are three critical issues about that race. That race, you cannot run it with weight. 
that race you cannot run it with sin he used the word he used the word weight and sin what's the difference what's the difference weight are things that are not in themselves sinful but you don't need to carry it along those of you who travel by air you know how they measure your load <laughs> and if it weighs more than what you are supposed to fly with you will either have to pay extra or you drop those loads because there is an allocated weight for you to fly there is a weight you cannot fly do you know that every aircraft has a maximum weight capacity if you put more weight than that the either will not be able to become airborne or as soon as they are airborne they will crash what are the weights in your life weights they may not be sinful but they are weight. That seasonal movie. It may not be sinful to watch it. But it's taking your time of prayer. It's keeping you from reading the Bible. It can become a weight. Do you know that activities can become a weight? Where you are just moving from one activity to the other. From one activity to the other. You are just involved. You are everywhere. Church activities can become a weight. You are trying to, you are in choir, you are in usher, you are in security, you are in welfare, you are in this, you are in that, you are in this, can become a weight. There are friendship that have become weight. Friendship that are weight. Drop it. It's not necessarily because of sin. But because they are weight. Weight will not. You, do you know how those who run, they run? They run very light. <laughs> do you know you won't see anybody who wants to run wear my clothes? Look at how light this cloth is. They won't wear it. It's not light enough. In fact, the people of the world, they so much understand it to the point where they almost run naked. They almost run naked. Any Anybody that wants to run, must run light. Have you seen somebody who wants to run 100 meters or 10,000 meters that is wearing suits? <laughs> that is that is wearing suit and tie and shoe. People who run, they run very light. You don't carry weight that God has not asked you to carry. You run very light. And then the second thing he says, and the sin which so easily ensnares us. What that is saying is that you can't run this race with sin. Some people are deceiving people today that they are giving them the impression that they can run with sin. Can I say to you, you cannot run this race with sin. Sin will not allow you to run. He says, look at the way he puts it. He said, let us lay aside one every way, two every sin. And let us run. It means you cannot run with sin. The people are playing with sin. <laughs> Brethren, the human problem is sin. And Jesus, he came to save us from sin. Recent days has been very busy for me. In fact, I became so busy to the point of coming on this program. And I realize that many Christians do not know the 
consequence of sin and the import of a life in Christ. Because you see, I've been, I've been speaking to married women across the continent. And I thank God for the privilege to speak with them from across the continent. Because it gave me an understanding that it's the same problem everywhere. I've had people reach out to me from Anguilla. I think it is Antica and Anguilla or something. It must be in the Caribbean. I spoke with somebody today from Italy. Each time I listen, as they tell me their story, I discover one, just one problem. And these are usually marital problems. And I ask them, are you born again? And many of these women will say, yes, I'm born again. I say, but this man that you are describing, he is not born again. And they're like, well, what's that? It used to be nice. I said, you don't get it. It means you are also not born again. If you are born again, you will know the importance of what it means to be born again. These men that you are getting married to are sinners. And you are claiming to be children of God. Don't you understand that there is no way they are going to give you what you are asking? All this, why can't he just do this? Why can't he? can't. Except a man is born again. He can't. He cannot see the kingdom of God. I realize that they thought it's a, it's a small matter. As long as he's a man and he's nice, it's okay. Brethren, you cannot run this marriage race with a sinner. <laughs> you don't know what Jesus did on the cross. If a man has not come under the mercy of the cross, Please leave that man alone. People don't understand the damage that sin has done to human soul. It's not about this man is nice. He, this person is caring. No, this person is still a sinner. We can't run this Christian race with sin. You can't run it. I don't care what, what they tell you. We can't run it. If the Bible is saying we should lay it aside. Why should we lay it aside if it is good for us? Why should we lay it aside if we can run in it, with it? Many people have never been able to commence a work with God. Because they live in a circle of sin. Today you say, oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. By next week, you are back doing the sins. He says, sin that easily beset us. Or sin that easily ensnares us. We are trying to just manage it. And you know, I have realized that. Many people have believed the lie that they cannot overcome sin. As I'm preaching now, if we cut this aspect of sin that I just talked about and post it online, people will come and comment and say, shut up. Nobody is a saint. The Bible says all have sinned and come short the glory of God. <laughs> you can't overcome sin if you believe you can't overcome it. If we can't lay it aside, the Bible will not say lay it aside. He said, lay aside every sin. If we can't lay it aside, the scripture won't tell us to lay it aside. If we can run with sin, the scripture will tell us to continue to run. Don't worry about your sin. Just keep running. Did you know that a man that is using drug to run, even if he wins the race, they will disqualify him. Because he has violated the rule of that race. That is a human system. 
Human systems are very strong against drug, drug use in sport. They say anti-doping. Did you know that human system will not allow you to take hard drug through their airports? They have machines, they have dogs that will detect anything you carry. That's human system. That no, you can't come with this one. <laughs> That's to enter a country, they will not allow you to enter with drugs. Whatever they consider a contraband, they will not allow you. But you want to go to heaven with your sin. You say, but Jesus has saved me. If he saved you, why are you still living in sin? What is the meaning of salvation? He shall call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sin. What then are you saved from? If you are not saved from sin, it's because you have believed the false gospel. The gospel is that Jesus came to set man free from sin. Man, this day, we undermine, we underestimate what it means for a man to be a sinner. It's a terrible, hopeless condition. <laughs> the next thing there, it says, let us run with patience let us run with patience other version says let us run with endurance you don't endure something that is uh, enjoyable you enjoy it you don't endure pleasure you enjoy it you wish it doesn't finish when you enjoy something, you wish it does not finish. But when you are enduring something, you do not wait for it to be finished. The Christian race is an enduring race. That's the Christian race. It is an enduring race. Today, people don't know about endurance. Everybody is looking for solutions to their problems. Many of those problems just require endurance. Sometimes we don't even recognize that we will endure certain things. I had a touching story today of a Christian woman who made this common mistake of marrying a man that does not know Jesus. <laughs> when she entered into marriage, it didn't take her long to realize that she had made the worst mistake of her life. But she said, God, you are going to help me in this one. Now, many people enter into marriage wrongly. And then they realize their mistake. But do you know what they are looking for? Quick solution. This man is a terrible man. So this man is a terrible man. They are looking for somebody who has anointing who can just say, man, behave, be good, love your wife. No. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So this lady came home one day and found her husband having sex with another woman on their matrimonial bed. She didn't say a word. She went to the kitchen. She prepared food for the woman and for the man. And served it. When they came out, well done there. Your food is ready. And you too, man. This is your own food. <laughs> First, the man by himself Chase the woman he brought home. He chased that woman away. The man was shocked at the character of his wife. This was after a long time of this woman enduring a terrible marriage. But she said she is going to live what God says she should live. He says, wife, submit to your own husband. So that by your conduct, they may be won over, even even though they don't believe. Not by what, but by your character. 
Eventually, this man became born again. Due to the endurance of his wife. That is a message people don't want to hear today. Everybody wants to go to a prophet and tell them, and tell the prophet their story. And the prophet will say, now, just sow a seed, just sow a seed, go home, your husband, your matter is solved. It's a lie. Man has to a will. I'm not saying there's not something God cannot do. No, you can do anything. But every man has a will. And God is not going to force the will of a man. There is a place for endurance, brethren. This Christian race is an enduring race. I only gave this example of endurance in the context of a bad marriage. It is the same endurance we will have in every aspect of life. I see many young Christians today, young, young girls. Because you are 37, you are 40, you are 45. You see, I've been waiting. I've kept, somebody said, why am I keeping myself? I said, go and do anything you like to yourself. <laughs> so you are keeping yourself, not because God commands you to keep yourself, but because you want to marry. There is a place for endurance. Sometimes you are looking for a miracle when what you need is endurance. And that's why there are many liars today because they are not going to tell you to endure. They are going to tell you that there is a solution. We can solve your problem. It's all lies. He says this race, we must run it with patience. You will face a lot of difficulty that you need patience. You will face challenges that you need endurance. That is the Christian race. Otherwise, all the cloud of witnesses, how did they run their own race? Did you know what the Bible says? If they look at where they were coming from, they could have turned back. They say that they even did not obtain the promise. If you read, if you go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39, look at what the Bible says. And this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Look at what they did. Let me read verse 36. Verse 36. Hebrews chapter 11. From verse 36. Look at what it says. Still others had trials of mockings. And scourgings. Yes. And of chains and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sawn into two. Were tempted. Were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheep skins and God's kings being destitute, afflicted, tormented. These were heroes of faith. <laughs> of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in desert and in mountains, in dens and in caves of the earth. You are saying, God, where will I have a house? We have witnesses who had no house to live. Whom the son of man said he had no place to lay, he said. Look at what he said. He said, and all this, having obtained a good report, true faith, did not receive the promise. <laughs> Brethren, this is how to work with God. This is how to work with God. Working with God is, <laughs> is a work of patience. You work with God patiently. Today, people are looking for quick solution. I realize that if you are a preacher and you don't know what you are doing, people will push you into what God has not called you to do. Because the issues that require patience in the life of people, they will come to you to provide solutions. If you don't know what you are doing, you too will want to give them assurance that there is, a, there is another solution apart from endurance. There are things that you only have to endure. There is no other solution than endurance. So when I look at the, 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 the marriage scene today, I'm asking myself, do these people never learn about endurance in their Christian work? You endure something because it is not convenient. You stay there and wait on God and say, Lord, 
you will show mercy on this marriage. You think it was easy because of the way I said the story. You think it was easy for a woman to come home and see a man sleeping with another woman on their matrimonial bed and go to the kitchen to cook for them. This is not the first time I will hear it. I will hear that kind of a story. I've actually seen a woman whom the husband will bring a woman to the house and order the wife to go and cook. And the wife will go and cook and they will eat. And when they are done eating, they will go to the bedroom and have sex. And the woman is there. I saw the woman with my eyes. Brethren, there is a place for endurance. Sometimes we are running from where God has posted us because we can't endure. There is a place for endurance. Many people have relocated to other countries wrongly because they can't endure. Just a, a temporary endurance, they run away. There is a race. You are in a race, oh brethren. Be conscious henceforth that you are in a race. That race is not sprint. You see, God is, is, is speaking to us every day, but we don't pay attention. I used to watch athletics and Olympics. I could give you fact about athletics. But you know, when I became born again, I just saw that they were all parables, parables, story, as in, if you if there's an athletic competition or there's an olympic competition almost all events you can receive revelation from god they are all just telling you stories why is it that everybody that is running they don't they don't wear they don't they don't wear heavy clothes why are they testing to ensure that there is there is no sample of drug in their in their urine or in their blood and God is saying the same thing to us. This is your race. You can't run it with sin. You must run it patiently. We must endure. There are things you won't like, but God will not take it away. Abraham endured with God. You think it was easy? To go to a land you don't know. And to wait, you that you are hearing God. <laughs> A man that is saying, God spoke to me. God spoke to me. Now, you don't have a child. And you say, God spoke to you. Sarah endured. The Bible says she believed against all hope. I was talking to a woman today. She's 51 years. And she told me, she said, ah, the time has gone. She has lost hope. I said, well, you didn't come to this world at least to have a child. God didn't send you into this world to get married. He didn't send you into this world to have a child. The most important thing is live for Jesus. All this weight that we are running about, they will come when we live for Jesus. If they don't come, so be it. There's a place for patience. There's a place for endurance. We must ask God. We must beg God and say, Lord, give me endurance. Moses endured. He was 40 years in Egypt and then he left. Do you know he was 40 years in wilderness? Many of you watching are probably not up to 40 years of age. Moses was 40 years in the wilderness after he tried to rescue the children of Israel. What was God doing for 40 years? How many of you will believe that God called him. He was 40 years old. Then he left Egypt. So imagine if you were there. And you saw him in the wilderness. When he was 50 years of age. Will you believe God called him? And then he celebrated his 60th birthday. Will you believe God called him? Will you believe God could do anything with his life? Then he celebrated his 70th birthday. Will you think God will do anything with the life of Moses? Then he celebrated his 80th birthday. And after he was 80, God now said, Moses, I want to use you to deliver my people. You think it was easy for Joseph? 
if many of us were in Joseph's position today, we'll be praying for um, uh, anointing, anointing to end problem. <laughs> Why do you think God took him through that? He had to endure. You will not find anybody that worked with God that didn't endure. Nobody. Nobody. So you are not going to be the first person. We have a cloud of witnesses. If we want to study endurance in the Bible, we'll probably, we'll probably spend years looking at men, how they endured in their work with God. Who do you want to talk about that did not endure? So the Bible now says this, looking unto Jesus, <laughs> the chief witness. You know what Jesus said about himself? He said, I am the true witness. If you can find that scripture, let me put it on the screen. He said, I am the true witness. I think it should be in Revelation. That chapter 2 or chapter 3. He said, looking unto Jesus. So if you are looking for a perfect example of endurance of somebody who ran his own race, Jesus is the perfect example. He didn't say looking unto Brother Shedu. He didn't say looking unto your pastor. He didn't say looking unto your denomination. Start looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Who are you looking at? Did you know that everyone, every one of us, we are looking at somebody? When you face challenge, who do you look at? You look at your friends. <laughs> you say, but look at all my friends, they are married. This one has a job. This one is, this one has traveled to Canada. This one has gone to UK. This one is in the US. Did the Bible say you should look at your friends? It says looking at Jesus, Jesus. That is the person. Revelation 3, 14. Thank you. That is the person we must look at. Jesus. Who is the author? And the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. He is the one that is starting the race. He is the one that will help us to end it. Hallelujah. We will not run without his help. Look at the way the Bible says. He said, he is the finisher of our faith. The Bible didn't say who is the author and the finisher. No. He is a finisher of our faith. He is the one that will bring us into completion. He says we should look at him. Look at his life. Look at his life. Look at the life of Jesus. Look at the life of the Son of God. And in case some people, some of you are thinking, maybe it's because you don't have power. That's why you have to endure. Let me ask you, why does Jesus have to endure? Is there any situation Jesus went through that he could not put an end to? You know, you if you have power, you will solve all your problems. <laughs> just I just imagine that you have power, you can heal all diseases. Any small headache, go out. Small pain, go out. <laughs> Jesus endured, even though he has power to stop every pain or every problem in his life. So don't think it is lack of money. Don't think it's because it's because in your family nobody respects you. Don't think it's because I'm an orphan. I'm a widow. <laughs> look at Jesus. Look at what he said. Look at the Bible say, "Who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? Escape the cross, dodge the cross, run away from the cross." Sought deliverance from the cross? No! Endured the cross. He endured the cross. It was not easy. He had power not to endure it. And you know why many people will not grow in this race? 
You are running away from the things God wants you to endure. The things God wants you to endure, you are running away from it. If you run 10 years, when you come back to God, you come and start there. So you better start enduring now. God will bring you into different experiences of endurance. Stop thinking your own is, is, the, only endure, is the only thing people, are, people have to endure. You know the problem. You will look at your mate that is married. You see, you see this one is married. Now you are not married. Rather than wait patiently and endure faithfully, you are looking at those who are not married. But those who, you are looking at those who are married. But some of those who are married, some of them have been married for 15 years. They don't have an issue. Some of them that married and have an issue, they can't pay school fees. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at other people's problems, your own problem, and thinking that you are the only one suffering. Every Christian must endure. There is no Christian that will not have things to endure. We must all endure. Jesus said, He that overcome it. It is a race of endurance. He said, Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So, what are we learning from Jesus here? He looked at the outcome of his endurance. I pray that God will open your eyes. To see what is in the other side of whatever you are enduring. Jesus. That's, so the Bible is telling us to focus on the end. If you want to finish well, your focus must be on the end. Can I show you the end? Can I show you the end of our race? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you the end of our race. Revelation chapter 1. Uh, sorry. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm going to read from verse 1. Because if you don't know the end, you may not, you, you may not see anything that will make you to endure. Did you know that everything you achieve, humanly speaking, you endured? When you were in school, you thought of the day you will graduate. Because of that, you endured everything. Some of you as women, when you go to the salon, you spend hours, you endured. Because you know when that hair is out. Hey, hey. <laughs> Even your husband, if he doesn't say he's beautiful. Today, I even for I regularly I forget to say it's beautiful. <laughs> I've accepted that cross. <laughs> but look at what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were away, and there were no more sea. There is a new world that is coming that there will not be ocean. Atlantic Ocean, India Ocean, there will be no ocean there. He said, And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride had done for her husband. And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This life is not our hope. There is a hope when God himself not his presence not his angels not 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 the the 24 elders not the cherubims god himself god himself shall be with them and be their god and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes including tears of joy <laughs> and there shall be no more death I'm not going to miss you again because you are not going to die. I am not going to die. We will live together. We will see each other and we will never die. What a beautiful life. He said we will not die. 
Neither sorrow. You won't know sorrow. You won't come to me and say, Russia, go, I need counseling. This is what my wife did. This is what my husband did. No, no more sorrow. No crying. All your tears at night. Everything God will wipe it away. Neither shall there be any more pain. It does not matter what pain you are going through now. Your bone may be failing. Your muscles may be failing. Your cells may be eating you up. He says, there will be no pain. For the former things are passed away. He says, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, these words are true and faithful. We are not running a careless race. We are not running a careless race. That is a go. It is sad today that many preachers have set this world as your joy. If what you see is the glory of this world, you cannot run with endurance the race that God has set before you. Jesus did not set having jeep, having cars, having houses as the reason why he endured the cross. Many people don't have reason to endure. Why do people go into sexual sin? Because they don't have reason to endure. They don't know what it, what, what it privilege, what it is that will come for keeping their body. So you want to do it now, 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 now. So look at Jesus again. When he saw the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Brethren, the cross was not sweet for Jesus. And Jesus had power to stop it, but he endured it. God will allow you to endure things that you have power to stop, but he will not allow you to stop it. You know, some many of you are stopping it. Somebody spoke to you. You said, let me give this person a piece of my mind. You know what you have done? You have run away from your endurance, from your race. You have, you have run out of track. I will deal with this person. Oh, that means that you are, you are not yet ready for this race. When, when was it, was it a Hushai that was abusing? No, 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 no. She may, she may that was abusing David and casting stone at him. David said, maybe the Lord. They said, let's go and kill him. He said, hey, you people, why are you always thinking of killing people? He said, maybe God has sent him to afflict me, to abuse me. Let me endure it. And he endured it. Maybe that spouse, all you need is just to endure. But you want to run. Now, somebody will hear this message now and say, eh, you're asking us to die in a violent marriage. Nobody is asking you to die in a violent marriage. Marriage doesn't kill people. It is people that kill people. Nobody dies in marriage. People die in a house. <laughs> Don't mix things together. People die in a house, not in a marriage. Marriage doesn't kill people. People kill people. Will kill you. Learn how to run. Look at the next thing here. The Bible says concerning Jesus, despising the shame. Hmm. There was need for Jesus. To go through shame. You know we don't like shame. I don't like shame myself. But you see sometimes. In this race. We may have to go through shame. The Bible says Jesus. He despised the shame. The shame was there. Jesus was the one who despised it. It's as if there was no shame, but he was there. Jesus didn't allow it to bother him. 
the one he despised the shame means he didn't allow the shame to stop him from obeying God. He didn't allow shame to stop him from being obedient to God. Some of us are ashamed. And because we are ashamed, we are trying to cover ourselves. When Adam and Eve were, uh, were naked, they became ashamed and they covered themselves. That's how we all do. You cover yourself with a lie because you don't want to be ashamed. Why do you lie? Sometimes it's because you don't want to be put to shame. So you lie. You are covering yourself with leaves. But Jesus despised the shame. But thank God, that was not where this passage ended. That's not where this passage ended. The Bible says, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He didn't say, and now he's a millionaire. And now he's a billionaire. You know why I'm saying this? Many people are enduring certain things because they are hoping to become millionaires. Money is their focus. It is not eternity. Brethren, endure for the sake of eternity. What was the joy that was set before him? A place at the right hand of the throne of God. A place at the right hand of the throne of God. What God is holding out for you is not houses, it's not car, it's not visa. What God is holding out to you is himself. He said, and God himself shall be with them. Did you know what he said to Abraham? I am your exceeding great, your great reward. Land is not your reward. Thousands of sheep, that's not your reward. I, God, I am your reward. But God wasn't sufficient for Abraham at that time. <laughs> he said, what will you give me? See that I go childless. That's how many of us are. God is offering us himself. We are saying, God, how about money? <laughs> Lord, how about some dollars? How about some pounds or euros there? How about some naira? But God is offering himself. He's offering himself himself. Brethren, I, I honestly wish that we can look more at the life of Jesus. Because, you see, we are not done. If you look at that verse, still, he said, for consider him. But we cannot consider him again now. He said, for consider him, consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners. I wish we can see the contradictions that Jesus endured. But we have to stop here today. It, maybe if he pleases God one day, we may have to visit this. Because that verse 12, that, this chapter 12, it continued to begin to explain to us further and further and further and further how Jesus endured, how we should also suffer, how we should also endure. You can go ahead and read that passage. Brethren, we are in a race. And the person to look at in that race is Jesus. The example that has been set before us is Jesus. He's not a man of God somewhere. Stop looking at your neighbor. Stop looking at your brother. Stop looking at your sister. Stop looking at your husband. Stop looking at your wife. The person you are to look at is Jesus. The person you are to compare your life with is Jesus. It says, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto him will also mean depending on him. But it, it means in this context very much that seeing his example. Look at how he endured. How he carried his cross. He was betrayed by his, 
by his best friend. The people he healed and fed, they were the ones that voted against him. They said, crucify him, give us bad abbas. Jesus didn't sin, he didn't get angry. They slapped him. Do you know they, that was God they were slapping? <laughs> when they slapped Jesus, that was God. Did you know that there is a movie in Nigeria that we just saw the, the last um, episode of, the, of a particular season of that movie? It is titled Abejoye by Monzayon. And I think a flame sword also in the US. Where a man appeared in a dream to somebody to slap that person. Do you know what that person said? That person said, in the name of Jesus, may your hand remain like this forever. <laughs> you see, that's the human heart. What they show in that movie is the human heart. Jesus will not do that. Jesus. They didn't portray the power of God correctly in that the movie. Fantastic. But you see, Jesus, when they slapped him, he didn't ask that hand to stay. If I was also there, if I was Jesus, what they did in that movie is what I would do. So even in this 2024, that hand will still be there. All of you will be watching it. I will ask that hand to stay like this. But Jesus, he took those slaps and uttered not a word. That's a man that has power. How about you and I? That we are in him. Brethren, there is a race. You can't run it with weight. You can't run it with sin. You must run it patiently. And the only perfect example we have of how to run that race is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Just speak to the Lord. I perceive there are some of you that you have run away from the place of endurance. This is an opportunity for you to repent. Some of you have been murmuring against God. Instead of looking at Jesus, you were looking at your mates. You were looking at your colleagues. And in your heart, you will say, but God, look at this one. Lord, see my friend. Lord, see my neighbor. Look at my brother. Look at my sister. But God is saying, did I ask you to look at these ones? Is it not Jesus that I've said before you? Some of you are looking at men of God. That's why many people are deceived. Many people are in a cult. They thought they are in a church. Because you are looking at a man. He didn't ask you to look at a man. He said Jesus before you. All other men were called cloud of witnesses. Only Jesus was set for us to look at. Before you complain about that, your pain, ask yourself, in comparison to Jesus, where am I? You need to repent today and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I have not been looking at Jesus. I was looking at men. I was looking at the economy. He said, look at Jesus. You are looking at the economy of your country. He says, let's lay aside every weight. Ask God to give you wisdom to identify the weight in your life. Those things that will never allow you to run this race successfully. Those things that will slow you down. That's what a weight does sometimes. A weight can slow you down. Weight will slow you down. Say, Lord, show me weight in my life, oh God. He said, let's lay aside also every sin. What are those sin? The same thing you've been repeating it, begging for God forgiveness. The Bible is saying you can't run a race like that. You must put an end to it finally. Cry to Jesus and say, Jesus, today put an end to this sin in my life. This matter of sin, Jesus, save me. He's the only one who can save you. He's the only one who can set your sin aside. 
Ask him to take care of those sins. Confess those sins to him. Maybe you just even committed it today. It could have been the same thing today. The same thing Jesus has been warning you. You went ahead and did it today. Because he's, ask, he's showing you mercy now. He's stretching forth his hand of mercy. Saying repent. Some of you, you need to ask now for grace to endure. He says you must run this race with endurance. Can you cry to God and say, Lord, give me endurance. Give me the grace to endure. Give me the grace to endure those things that there is no alternative. Help me, oh Lord, help my heart to stay. Give me grace. Give me strength. This is one strength that we all need. This strength. The Bible said that you that you will be strengthened with might in the inner man. Do you know what that strength is used for? Endurance. One of the need for the strength of the Lord is endurance. Many people cannot endure. They are compromising everywhere because they don't want to endure anything. Lastly, can you please ask the Lord and say, Lord, show me this race. Help me to know in my spirit that I'm in a race. Open my eye of understanding to see that I'm in a race. That I cannot afford to be careless. I cannot afford to live every day as it comes. There is a definite race. There is something I must achieve. There is something I must become. Time is running out, Lord. Put it in my heart that I'm in a race. Help me to see the race that is before me. There is a race before you. Stop looking at the race that is set for another man. There is a race before you. Ask God to open your eyes to see your own race. Lord, show me my race. Help me to see my race. So that I can run it and run it successfully. Paul said, I have finished my race. That was a man that finished. I want to finish also, Lord. It is a man that knows where he is going that can say, I have arrived. If you don't know what where you are running to, how can you say you are finished? Men who finished knew what to do. Say, Lord, let me know what you want to do with my life. Such that I can finish it and say I have finished. Help me to run my life. Help me to run this race successfully. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his grace. God has been so gracious to us again. The teachings of Christ series. God has been gracious to us today. Thank him. Give him all the glory. All the glory. Please don't think of any man. Think only of Jesus. And give all the glory to him. Give all the glory to him. All the honor. All the praise, all the adoration. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. He has been merciful and gracious to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we are grateful to you. Let's round up our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.